Good morning everyone. It's a beautiful morning here in the Carolinas. It's about 50 degrees and I think we're expecting temperatures of in the high 60s. This past weekend did a little glamping. I uh, got to do some video uh, editing and I'll get that posted but Spanky and I had a great uh, weekend. The temperatures were in the mid to upper 70s. Absolutely beautiful out. I uh, did a little uh, hiking around the lake at the park. Um, hung out by the uh, campfire and really just kind of took it easy. Didn't do a whole lot of adventuring. I've been to that particular campsite uh, probably six times now. So really just hung out, uh, enjoyed the RV, and uh, hung out at the campsite. Uh, it was kind of lazy, to be honest with you. Sometimes I feel like that's good and, and bad. Uh, I need to be a little more active, especially every time uh, I look at myself in these videos. I'm like, yeah, uh, I got to lose a little weight, and, and the morning definitely doesn't help. Your face is always groggy looking, but uh, that's going to be the next adventure is uh, putting a stopper in that skinny if you haven't seen that video. Um, just really controlling my diet and, and watching what I eat. So this morning, or actually over the weekend, once I was done glamping, I have obtained a storage uh, facility, a parking lot at a storage facility for the Airstream Interstate. So I was excited to unpack it and go ahead and take the interstate uh, to the, the parking lot, went over, did that, and uh, this was the first time that I've had the interstate at the, the storage facility. And the storage facility from the point that you actually enter and drive to the parking space, it's a straight shot, which is great, but it's a straight uh, decline down. And they've had to grade it for topography and rainwater and all that. So the asphalt it's weird. It's it's super bumpy. Well, of course, there had to be somebody unloading stuff into their storage unit um, on one side of the road where I had to drive. So I was kind of forced to the left side a little bit where there was a greater um, step in the asphalt. Uh, so, of course, I think the tail end of the interstate um, hit the asphalt and not the fiberglass or... Um, not the actual bumper or anything. I think it was one of the metal protectors on the bottom of the interstate um, to keep it from pretty much bottoming out. Um, so yeah, that was a quick little scrape that made me cringe. Everything I double checked underneath, everything, the generator cage, uh, everything is um, safe under there. So attempted to uh, pull in, needless to say, or the, the parking spot is at the curve in the street in the storage facility. So it was a little uh, difficult trying to get it in, first of all. And then on each side of the parking lot that I had reserved, uh, one guy has got his work truck on one side and then there's just like a flatbed trailer on the other side. So it's a little tight and the storage facility had already asked the guy with the work truck to scoot it over a little bit. Uh, which, I gotta change hands, my arm's getting tired, um, which he had done at some point. Um, yesterday, it was tight. I, I managed to back it in, and there would have been room, um, or there was enough room, I think. The problem is that because the parking lot is at the curve or bend of the road, for either the guy with the work truck or the flatbed trailer trying to come out and go in, uh, the, the front end of the interstate stuck out too far that I, I was just super afraid the front end would get clipped at some point. And then, um, you know, anybody who's coming and going at their storage unit and has a moving truck, I mean, the, the interstate was right at the end of this road where you had to turn the bend to turn the corner to, to go to exit again. I just, I felt like I was in a, a high traffic area and I can't do it. Um, it just, my stomach sinks. Again, if you haven't seen my video about my HOA and them driving me nuts and I can't keep the interstate on my driveway, you know, 
I feel safest, obviously, having the interstate on my driveway. Um, so I'm really struggling trying to find a good storage facility to park it. So I went to the office and talked to the manager who was actually on duty. And she said there is a 30 foot um, spot that I had looked at before, but it's reserved. But what they had to do is where the story just, you know, gets even better. You think there's a a ray of uh, light, but then uh, not really. So she started talking about that. So it kind of perked my ears up. There's a 30 foot spot uh, that was wider uh, in that same area, but out of, uh, out of harm's way. Um, that another guy with a work truck had, but she had made a temporary spot for him um, because there was an apartment complex that was built right behind these parking spaces. And he didn't feel secure during all the construction. He didn't feel safe um, with his truck full of tools being parked there. Um, So they made a temporary spot for him to move his truck out of the way. So now the apartments are built up And the storage facility has a chain link fence with barbed wire on top, um, which is kind of bent over. I mean, it basically needs to be torn out and redone. Uh, And if you can imagine, these parking lots have the fence directly behind them that's kind of pushed over. And then the apartment building is three stories tall, overlooks the parking lots. And I'd say the the apartment building's probably not but 20 feet away from the parking spaces. So it's kind of an odd feeling when you're back there, you have this towering apartment building right over you. I just feel like the parking spaces are exposed and it doesn't give me a sense of security um, with that being the case. There's just too much going on in that little area and they're not done landscaping yet. So I don't know how much work they have to do, how much damage that would cause if there's flying rocks or dirt or, or you know, what there could be. But it was interesting because the manager said that while they were painting the apartment building, uh, the painters came over and apparently covered the vehicles and everything that was being, um, that were being stored there, um, before they started spray painting. And apparently some of the overspray Um, still got on some of the trailers and vehicles. So she's telling me this, you know, at the same time she's saying, well, I'm going to see if I can offer that guy's temporary spot to him permanently. And then we'll move you to this other spot, which is actually bigger than what I have now. And it would be at the same cost, um, which is right around $65 a month. So, you know, it's a struggle because I'm like, all right, you know, 30 foot space that's longer than the one I have now at the same cost. Cool. But they're done painting, but they still have landscaping and God forbid they come at the apartment complex and do any other work that happens to damage. I I don't know. It just, I'm like, there's too much going on back there. Not cool. So again, yesterday I was prepared to drop the thing off. So she said, give me until Wednesday. I'm going to contact the gentleman who has the temporary spot and offer it to him and I'll get back with you. And I was like, all right. So keep in mind, I'm at a point where I'm ready to be done with all of this. I'm ready to be done with my HOA. Um, I want to find a home for the interstate as much as it kills me to do that. And I hate to pay for storage when I have plenty of storage on my driveway. Uh, I'm ready to be done with it all. So since I determined the original storage facility was not going to work and I already had the Airstream and was planning on dropping it off, I decided to go check on one of the original locations um, that uh, had some availability. They were a little more expensive and um, a little further away from where I live. So not ideal, uh, but not horrible at the same time. Um, the one thing I did not like about this location was that it's in a very busy area and I just don't like all the commotion, a lot of road traffic, which I know has nothing to do with the actual storage facility itself, but I can't help but think that because of all the traffic, there's a lot of comings and goings in the actual storage facility, um, because it's convenient for a lot of people. And again, having the interstate parked in a very busy storage facility is not ideal, but at this point I've got to find something. 
So the other thing I did not like about the storage facility is that it was very confusing when searching uh, for storage facilities around my area um, that there were two names on Google and Google Maps for the storage facility. Uh, and I later found out, and it was hard trying to find the website, and I later found out that they were recently bought out by another larger company. And so on looking at their website, their pricing uh, that they had on their website is not the pricing or availability uh, necessarily that the uh, the office staff was showing. And when I called the number to get a hold of the local storage facility, it connects you to more of their corporate call center, which had completely different availability and pricing. And the pricing was better when you talk to the call center person than the pricing was um, talking to the actual person in the office. So I did not like the first impressions that I was receiving from, uh, from the storage facility. So anyway, I drove over there. I already had my backup ride uh, ready and waiting for me in case I did find a place I could keep the Airstream and uh, have a ride home. Well, lo and behold, it was Sunday and they were closed. So I figured I would go back um, sometime in the week. And uh, so I proceeded with pulling out of the parking lot and I looked across the way and behind more of this corporate office building, I saw a whole bunch of RVs parked. I'd never seen that before. And that piqued my curiosity. So I drove down the street and over there and saw on the road a large sign that said RV and boat storage inquire within building. And they had a phone number. Again, keep in mind it's Sunday, so they're not open. But I called the phone number. Immediately, a uh, lady answered and indicated that they did have availability uh, in multiple sizes. The price point was actually less expensive than the rental unit. Um, that I already have under contract. So I have just over a 20 foot um, parking space under contract now, um, and it's about $67 a month. Um, at this location, they had just over 20 foot parking spaces at about $55 a month, so win-win there. It's a flat parking space, very well lit, multiple security cameras, and it's designed for RVs and boats. So you've got large turning radiuses. There were a lot of nice Class A's. Um, there's power connections over there. So some of the Class A's were plugged up and, and uh, powered on. So I scheduled to go take a tour uh, of the parking uh, lot, which I did the next day. So Monday morning, went and checked it out. And I actually met with the owner. Um, and asked him about it. He said it's about 11 acres, and he started it because he runs his business out of the really nice uh, office building in the front of the property, and he needed a place to store his RV. So he decided to go ahead and create the, uh, the, the parking space back there and rent it out. So he's got his Class A parked back there, a uh, nice 40 foot, and again, it's surrounded by a lot of different RVs. So I looked at a couple of different sizes, um, just over a 20 foot, not 100% ideal location. It's kind of at the cur same situation, kind of at the curve of the road. So I didn't like how it's in a uh, higher traffic area. And then there was a great 12 foot wide by 30 foot deep parking space. It was about $85 a month, definitely more than I wanted to spend. So I didn't make a decision that day. So I'm actually on my way back now to meet with the owner again. Uh, a couple of different spaces opened up, a 30 foot and just over a 20 foot. Um, the 30 foot that I originally looked at was 12 feet wide, which is great. Uh, and that was $85 a month. Um, 12 feet is, is great. I think the interstate is not, but uh, it's like seven and a half feet wide. So it's a skinny little thing. Um, they just had a 30 foot deep by 10 foot wide open up for about $70 a month. Um, so that would be perfect. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards at this point, I think will work great. And then I'll check out the location of the other 20 foot, which still is in a, it's a, at the end of the row. It's in kind of a, another highly or visible high traffic area. 
So I'm hoping to go ahead and secure the $70 30 foot deep one and be done with it. A lot of places are offering, you know, half month off or um, a month free. So I'm going to see if they'll offer anything and uh, we'll check it out and see how it goes. All right. So I just seen the paperwork finally on my second RV parking lot. And I'm sorry, I meant to take pictures of the space, but I was out there with the owner and um, he talks fast and moves and has ants in his pants. And so um, I didn't have time. I was trying to make a decision between two parking spaces. So the 10 foot by 30 foot was $70 a month. And then the 12 foot wide by 30 foot was $85 a month. He wasn't willing to budge at all. And the only promotion that he offered was if I paid 12 months in advance, then he would, uh, uh, the, the 13th, 13th month would be included. So, um, I'm not willing to pay 12 months in advance because I have no idea where the RV is going to be or what I'm going to be doing in 12 months. Um, but I've got that done. So I will more than likely get the RV over there tomorrow. And at that point, I'll, um, uh, show you guys around. All right, so here we are in our final parking space, about 30 feet deep and 10 feet wide, nice and flat. Uh, wish the unit next to me wasn't so close. It's maybe two feet, and they're not exactly parked straight on the line. Uh, don't have anybody on this side. Now, I look like I didn't park straight, but I don't think the line is straight. But anyway, there's our new home. And you can kind of see, got a couple of boats. The storage facility is really dedicated to RVs. Truck, a lot of RVs, trailers. This side has more trailers. Now originally this spot 2015 right here um just over 20 feet but then there's a gentleman who parks his trailer like this right there and so that comes and goes all the time and it's right at the curve in the road so you come down and you turn to the left and i did not want to be straight ahead uh, and they're definitely narrower so for now at least the little interstate Kind of looks lonely right there is amongst its uh, bigger brothers and sisters so hopefully this concludes the rv storage uh saga uh finding a home for the airstream interstate since my hoa is not having it in my driveway and i uh, am glad to finally uh put this to bed and move on so I appreciate you guys watching. As always, uh, feel free to uh, leave questions and comments below. Uh, thumbs up if you like, share, subscribe, and I will see you on the next vlog. Take care.